So I would really like for you guys to let me know in, in the comments below what you think. Do you think that my sister actually set this thing up or is she just like super kinky or I don't know to this day. This happened when I was 18. No, I was 19. So this is the story. I was 19 years old. My sister, my little sister was 18 years old. 17 or 18. She's like a, a year uh, and some change younger than me. Um, anyway, my, our parents were gone for the weekend doing their a grown folk thing and left me in charge of the house. So <clears throat> my little sister wanted to have company. She wanted to have a guy come over so they could, you know. And I didn't want any of those problems. We, our parents were pretty, um, they were, we didn't come from a loving family, okay? I didn't come from a loving family at all. And so any excuse to set my narcissistic stepmother off, I, I didn't want any problems. So she asked me, you know, could she have this guy over? And I was like, no, get out of here. <clears throat> and um oh my gosh the begging the begging the begging she's just uh -huh, Brandy, please, please, please. oh my gosh so after a while i give in like a dummy and i'm like okay but listen i don't want to see no evil i don't want to hear no evil and i ain't gonna speak no evil okay you keep that to your damn self. I don't want to see this dude. I don't, I, I want him to be like a ghost. You know, I know nothing. I know nothing, <laughs> nothing. I don't want to know anything about this. So she swears, you know, that, um, she, okay, that she agrees to that. All right. So I get to doing my chores because, you know, like, I, I don't want no problems. I want all my privileges. I don't want when it's time for me to go out. I'm 19 years old. I'm trying to go to the club. I'm trying to do my thing, you know. And I, I don't want to hear, well, you didn't mop the floor properly. Or, you know, you didn't do every single dish. And I said, I don't want to hear none of that shit. So, I'm doing my chores. And I got a bucket of cleaning solution in one hand big old plastic, you know, glove, cleaning glove on the other hand. I got on like um, some little spandex shorts and a little um, crop top. I'm just cleaning, you know, and uh, the doorbell rings. So the way that our house was at that time, um, the front door, is is like at this little foyer type of like floating foyer open it's it was open like this the there's a stairwell from upstairs and then there's that little you know turnabout for a foyer and here's the front door and then there's a, a second set of stairs coming down into the main level of the house and then they're like the stairs were like floating stairs so you could see through you know each stair so the guy <clears throat> comes into the front door and I'm standing behind, I'm going into the kitchen to go clean up or whatever, but I'm walking, you know, I'm walking past that area so he can see me and I can see him. As soon as he walks into the door, he snatches his coat off, throws it at my little sister's feet. She answered the door for him. And he takes off running towards me. I dropped the bucket. I dropped everything and like everything. And I ran. I ran for my life. Jesus. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I took off running. I ran into the basement. We There was a door in the basement that you could go 
out the side of the house or whatever, right? So I I ran into the, the basement. This dude is hard on my heels. I'm going down the steps, and by the time I get to the bottom, I hear him at the top. So at the bottom of the stairs, there's this uh, a little folding door. You know what I mean? Like you push it in the middle, and it'll collapse to the side. So it, it wasn't much of a door. It, it was probably just like to keep the sound from the basement. Like if you want to have a party, you know, because we had like a bar and all that kind of stuff in the basement. And so um, it wasn't much of a door, but it was something at that time. So I get to the bottom of the stairs and then I close that door and I'm putting all my weight on that door. I mean, I'm mm, mm, everything, everything is going into that door. Do you understand? And this, cause this guy was like 28 years old, built, you know what I'm saying? Like one of them ex-jocks from high school, used to be on the wrestling team, just way too big for no reason. But, and, and not fat at all. He looked like, you know, like a football player, like, you know, one of these athletes or whatever. He was really, really strong and he was in the prime of his youth, you know, and <clears throat> I was 19, nowhere near as strong as him. And so, um, I'm putting all my might into this door and I guess, and he was putting all his might into getting the door open. So I'm thinking, I'm doing okay. I'm keeping the door closed. You know, the door, I'm holding that one. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not trying to let that door go. And then I hear him say, move Jackie. Jackie's not my little sister's name, but you know. And I guess she moved because like two seconds after he said that, he overpowered me and pushed the door open. So he, um, he got through the door and I, I ran again and he tackled me to the ground. And <clears throat> he was um, just big ass man, was all over me just wrestling. I, I mean, I was wrestling. I was wrestling with everything I had, everything I had for like, five whole long minutes. I don't know if you have never been in a fight before, five minutes is a long time to be defending yourself against someone who is much bigger than you, stronger than you, you know, and he probably was on sports teams. You know what I mean? He might've been on a wrestling team or something like that. And, and, and all that. And I, I was not experienced. I was not, I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> no, well, not anymore, but <laughs> I, I, I don't tolerate none of that garbage no more. But anyway, I, you know, I didn't know how to fight. I didn't know what to do. Great big ass man <clears throat> all over me. So anyway, he is trying to pull my clothes off me. So I had on, you know, some spandex. Let me back up a little bit. I had on some little spandex, right? And so, you know, spandex, they just stretchy, right? He's got both his hands, he's he's at my private parts, like this. He's got both his hands pulled my the sides of my spandex like down to here. I got <laughs> I got hold of the jewels. <laughs> I'm holding on for their life. I got I got two handfuls of my spandex holding on. Holding on for dear life, <clears throat> trying not to let this man get my shorts off me, cause, oh. so we struggling, we wrestling. He's damn near got my shorts down. I'm crying out 
to my sister. Jackie, get this nigga off me. Help me. Help me. Go to police. Get this man off me. I mean, I'm screaming. I'm hollering. I am fighting. I am losing my mind right now because I still don't know what is going on. And um, she just stood there. She just stood there. She didn't do anything. She didn't tell him to stop. She ain't jump on this nigga. She didn't do anything. She could have kicked him. She could have did something. She could have called the police. She didn't do anything. She just stood there and watched the whole So after like five minutes, he finally just stopped. He finally just clicked and let me go. And I ran out of there. God, I got out of there. <sighs> like a dummy, like I just went up, ran into my bedroom and locked the door. Oh gosh. See, don't mentally abuse your kids, folks. You, you, when you verbally abuse your kids and you criticize your kids and you reject your kids all the time, they don't know when to speak up. They don't know what to do in an emergency. They don't know what to do. So anyway, back to the story. Um, oh, before I get back to the story, because I can't even believe what she did next. Um, hit the subscribe button. <laughs> I have crazy i have a crazy amount of crazy stories this one is just one so anyway um yeah i got away and then i'm thinking you know they about to have an argument you know she's she's i invited you over here for me and you ran after my sister what that's what's that about you know i'm I'm thinking like something is about to happen between them two they had sex she had sex with him she had sex with him i mean i, I wasn't present i didn't i had no idea that was going on because like they were in the basement i ran up to to the third floor, I ran up to, well, the second floor, um, to get away from him, but, uh, yeah, they were down there doing that, so he left, whenever he left, <clears throat> um, she comes up to our bedroom with this towel, with a big pink wet spot in the middle of the towel showing me this towel talking about mm, it was so good and blah 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 bragging to me telling me how they just had sex and how huge his cucumber was and how he split her from her front to her back. And for her, that is good sex. Yeah. Now, um, before you get to judging my sister, um, we both were molested by our family members and she she was actually raped by um one of our cousins and um and it happened a lot he was like 16 and she was like seven or eight <clears throat> and um my dad didn't do anything about it you know whenever we would bring anything like that to our parents they would tell us 
that we were just trying to stir up trouble. We were just, you know, shut up, go away, kid, you bother me. That's not true. Why are you lying? You just trying to start stuff or that's in the past. Why are you bringing that back up? You know what I mean? Like they, they didn't deal with anything. So anyway, um, yeah, but, um, I really don't know what to think about that. I never, I never have, I never knew what to think about that, how to process that. I mean, I come from a really dysfunctional family, hence all the crazy stories that I'm about to dump on y'all. <laughs> um, but so it's really broken. Like I don't really communicate with any of them because I, I, I want the rest of my life to be the best of my life. I don't want to wallow in dysfunction and I don't want to recycle ignorance, you know, and, um, I, I want to heal. I want healthy relationships, but that takes for me to be healthy. And if my family members, you know, don't want to be, then I don't give them a pass in my life. You know, you just, I don't need that. I don't care if your family, I don't care if your blood, but, um, it, it's, it just hurts, you know, to think about that. And, um, like, how she must feel about me to be willing to let something like that happen and potentially have plotted to to make that happen. I mean, what do y'all think about that? You know, I um I developed I got scared of men after that and uh I, cause I, I, my father married me off at 16 years old. <laughs> That's a story. I'm, I'm going to put some links at the, um, uh, at the end of this video, um, to, you know, some more of my crazy stories. But, um, my father married me off at 16 years old. He told all of us, my, me, I had two sisters that um we had to leave because his wife um he i don't think my father never wanted us around let alone um when his when he got married and she you know i guess saw his disinterest in us and that gave her permission to just you know become cruella deville and uh so of course she didn't want us around so um when we turned 16 then um there would be some big fuss some big ruckus you know um uh all of a sudden the oldest child would be like the monkey wrench in their relationship so you would have to go um as long as it wasn't her child yeah her son stayed in their house until he was like 37 but anyway um um yeah so that was a major rejection that was a huge blow my dad put me out at um 16 years old but i had a boyfriend at that time um and i i had been with him since i was 14 and um we had planned on getting married when i turned 18 anyway and um when my father put me out <clears throat> he um he just he signed for us to get married <laughs> So, um, yeah, that was a whole story too. Um, I'll link the description or oh, I'll, I'll link the video to that one too, if you want to see that. But anyway, um, I got married at 16 then, excuse me. <clears throat> um, my marriage was beautiful <laughs> until I found out that my husband was cheating on me like crazy. Cause I was so young and he was, he was, he was like, he was a lot older than I was. So anyway, um, yeah, when I found out he was cheating on me like crazy, that broke my heart and I couldn't take it. So I left him and um, that's how I wound up, wound up back at my parents' house at 19 when that situation with my little sister happened. So anyway, the rejection, constant rejection from my parents and then my husband you know when my father threw me away like trash because that's how that made me feel to be put out at 16 years old you know you're not ready for anything 
at 16. And um, I, I I would ask my dad, you know, why can't we get family counseling? You know, what's going on? You know, whatever, whatever. And then to be smacked in the face with just get out at 16 years old, that um, shredded my heart, shredded my heart. Because I, you know, I, I loved my father. And um, so my husband my ex-husband he was like my knight in shining armor you know when my dad treated me like trash and then him and his wife went and talked to all out my aunts and uncles and my grandmother and tore me down like i was just the worst child in the world and i wasn't I was always seeking approval to be accepted in my own house, but nothing I ever did was good enough. And, you know, I didn't realize as I was growing up, but I wasn't the problem. There was nothing wrong with me, you know. Um, my parents were, you know, they was, they were who they were. And so they didn't want kids. And so, you know, the first easy out that could come, they took it. Or made one. <laughs> so anyway. <clears throat> um, so yeah, when my dad treated me like trash, my hus my ex-husband married me. And that it 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 filled a space in my heart that my father, you know, had tore out. And but then so while I was married to him. I wanted my marriage to work. I was so in love with him. I would, I did everything. I tried to, you know, be um, everything. And um, his friends convinced him that like, since he was my first, you know, love and all that kind of stuff that um, <sighs> he could do whatever he wanted to do and I wouldn't go anywhere. So he, you know, thought, started cheating on me and thought that I was just going to take it. And God revealed it to me that he was cheating on me. Like God literally spoke to me and told me how to, um, where the evidence was that he was cheating. That's another crazy story right there. Yeah, God. <laughs> God told me to how to, you know, where the evidence was, to where to find the evidence to find out that he was cheating and he was cheating. And so um, that broke my heart. So between my dad breaking my heart and then my husband breaking my heart and then this fool trying to rape me, um, I I became gay. I got scared of men. I, I really got scared of men. I, I felt like there's just no pleasing men. And they're dangerous with your feelings and it's not worth the risk. And uh, I became gay and uh, I was gay for years until God spoke to me one day and he took it from me. <laughs> God, God, uh, God took it, took it away from me. Like he took all the, the, the attractions that I had for women because I was a I used to give my girlfriends 10 orgasms in under an hour because I wanted them to be, uh, I, I didn't want them to leave me the way that my husband left me or, well, he didn't leave the relationship. I left the relationship, but emotionally to me, he left me because, you know, he's, he's cheating and all that kind of stuff. Like that's not being present in our relationship. So anyway, um, so that I would not experience those problems, the problems that I had with men in my relationships with women, I thought the best way, um, to, you know, have cohesion in my, um, relationships with my girlfriends would be to give them pleasure like they had never experienced before. I mean, like, I... You know, no man had ever given me orgasm. And so I was like, yeah, if I get it down like that, then I won't have to worry about my girlfriends leaving me. And uh, it worked. <laughs> it definitely worked. Um, 
yeah so i i i was gay and i was having a very good time and uh i was on my way to marrying my girlfriend i was working up you know the courage to and uh and the plan to get financially right so that you know we could have a wedding and all that kind of stuff and then god literally intervened i wasn't going to church i i was like look god just don't look over here. Don't, you know, I, I don't mind my business, Jesus. And, and, you know, you do your God thing, you know. Just please don't look this way. <laughs> so, I, You know, I ain't go to church. I wasn't going to church. I was, look, when God delivered me from being gay, I was in college full time. <laughs> I was stripping <laughs> i was a stripper i was dancing <laughs> with my roommate she talked me into dancing that's another story i'm telling you y'all need to subscribe just hit the subscribe you won't regret it okay i promise you you won't regret it but um anyway uh i was doing my thing i was high all day like i would smoke weed like i would i was take like two days to smoke a blunt but i was high all day i would just like puff puff you know put it out float around until you know four or five hours later then puff 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 float around <laughs> four or five hours later another puff before i go to bed you know and i ain't even really started in on the blunt so i would be high all the time but um you know i wasn't like into being trashed or anything like i was completely i would go to work i worked full-time i had my own place i was going to college full-time i was you know whatever but i had a lot going on i was a little wild child and uh yeah i was not thinking about god at all i was um i was ha just having fun you know thrill seeking like most young people anyway yeah god uh he actually spoke to me like I heard his voice. He, I had a confrontation with the Lord. And um, it, he asked me one question and then I answered it. And then I just didn't feel attracted to women anymore. I wasn't grossed out, but I just, the attraction was just gone. I, 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 and I, I never looked back. But um, yeah, so... I actually wrote a book about that, um, how God delivered me from being gay. But the book is not about how God delivered me from being gay. The book is uh, to give men the, the techniques that I used to use to give my girlfriends the 10 orgasms. <laughs> I figured, you know, while I was on that side, I learned a couple things, you know what I'm saying? A couple little things. And so, you know, I was like, well, what can I do? Because a lot of the women that I met, like when I first became gay, the first thing I noticed was <laughs> the sex was trash. It was trash. I, I was gagged i was so gagged i was like okay how are you a woman and you have all these parts and you don't know what to do with them you said you've been gay for how long you've been gay for years and you don't know what to do with the punani okay so i i put myself on a mission because i was like if i'm gonna be this way i'm gonna be good and uh so anyway i got real real good and um then you know I'm a woman, so I knew what worked on me. Ba 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 ba. What? I, look, I'm gonna put the description to the book. I, I, the description to the book is, I, I mean, not the description. The link, the link, the Koji link. It's in the um, description. You can click on that, have that, have fun with that. Be careful. Be careful with that, cause women be tripping. <laughs> it's a, get that good good oh and listen women too this this book is not just for men because um you know if, if you are a woman and you've never had an orgasm look you can have one every single time you can have multiple ones every single time 
get this get that book it's called bedroom secrets of an ex-lesbian okay it's uh, the koji link is in the description get the book and you listen to it you listen to it and then you'll hear the the techniques you know and you can make sure like it's things that you can do to yourself while y'all are entangled <laughs> While you're in an entanglement. <laughs> uh, it's things that you can do to make sure that fireworks pop up. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Every single time. Because, like, after I learned this stuff, even though I was doing it to women, like, when God delivered me um, and I got married again, um every time every single time every single time i always like i do not have trashy sex at all i know too much you know what i'm saying and, and once you know then you don't ever have to deal with that you know and uh yeah <laughs> if you're gonna be involved that way might as well make it good right yeah so um Gone are the days that women just lie there and let their man get his pleasure and she is left wanton. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So um, check out, check out um, some of these other videos that I'm going to put up here. Any one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you'll like it i promise you and um definitely definitely if the bedroom secrets of an ex-lesbian can help you and your love life with your wife or you know just if you aren't comfortable in the bedroom you know sometimes like it's intimidating you know when i was making love to women you know you get her bad you want to make sure that she's pleased you know it's kind of like a performance anxiety you know if you don't know what you're doing but when you know what you're doing <laughs> it's a good 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 thing check it out okay you guys thank you you made it all the way to the end you listen to me talk all the don't you realize i'm crazy <laughs> But anyway, you made it all the way to the end. I appreciate you even giving me the time of day because I know you got important stuff to do. You are special. You are special. And you are important. And even if you don't think that you got important stuff to do or that you're important, you really are. You really are. You need to love yourself. Okay? I love you. Have a great day. See you in the next video. <laughs>